Right, so WWDC 2023 has been announced, and so let's dive into iOS 17 changes we can expect at this event. So yeah, recently German gave us new details regarding iOS 17, because apparently the initial plan was to give us an iOS 12-like release, where the focus was on bug fixes and performance, but it seems Apple's changed their mind because now the plan is to give us some nice to have features with this new iOS release. Now unfortunately, as per usual, German's pretty vague, so he gives us no details regarding what to expect and what these new features are gonna be with iOS. But I'll be honest guys, I would have actually preferred a bug fix here for iOS because iOS 16 did have some new features, but there's been tons and tons of bugs. I've made a video regarding this and the issues I've had with my 14 Pro Max, and many others have also expressed problems they've been facing with iOS. And so yes, I would rather have stability over some fancy features that I might actually not use. Anyways, for those wondering what kind of features we can expect, with iOS 17 we do have some leaks, from iHack2 Pro, though he's not the most credible source in the world, so do take this with a massive grain of salt. But the first thing he tells us is that we could see multitasking improvements. He's not sure if we're going to see split screen, which I personally want and have wanted for years, but we could see a clear all apps button on iOS, similar to Android's. And I'll be honest guys, I don't understand why we need this. iOS rarely has RAM issues in my experience. Heck, even the Android phones I have rarely have RAM issues. And so yes, I never clear all apps on those phones, and I doubt I'm going to be doing that on iOS. Anyways, I had to continue to give us pretty vague information. For example, he says there's new features on the lock screen, but he tells us nothing regarding what these features are going to be. And to be honest, considering we just had a major redesign for the lock screen with iOS 16, I doubt Apple's going to give us any further changes. Anyways, the vagueness continues. They say there's going to be a new control center, a new widget, and a new home screen, which is a lot for one iOS refresh. And yeah, I should reiterate guys, definitely take everything he says with a massive grain of salt. But personally, out of those three main parts of iOS, I'm hoping the home screen does adopt native icon theming support. Many have wanted this since iOS 14, so I do think there would be a big market if this feature was natively built within iOS. And also like the lock screen, we could see new fonts for the complete UI. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. I had to also mention some changes to the island on the iPhone. I think that would be pretty neat. And finally, I had to ends by saying more features coming and accessibility features coming, which is the most vague thing anyone could say. So yes, guys, please take all of this with a grain of salt. I'm quite doubtful myself. And in fact, in the past, many have been wrong about iOS updates. I remember there were leaks regarding the Big Sur icons coming to iOS 15, but that was not the case. And also the wallpaper customizability changes we saw with iOS 16 leaked with an alleged build of iOS 14. So yeah, basically no one really knows what to expect with iOS 17. Apple could surprise us and give us features we don't expect. But I'll be honest guys, as I said before, I would much rather have a bug fix here for iOS. I really don't have many features on my wish list that Apple needs to give us. iOS is already pretty feature rich, but the stability is kind of missing because there's some updates which are great and then there's other updates that break things. So yes, I'm hoping that as much as Apple focuses on the fancy features, they also focus on the stability of the software and of course, keeping it mostly bug free. Because I'll be honest guys, I've been using a Pixel 6a for a bit and Android has become super polished. I've had no issues and so it would be nice if iOS could match Android in that regard once again because for the longest time iOS was known as the more stable OS but that's not been the case as of late. Anyways, let's delve into your questions. So C says for the solid state buttons, I wonder if there's going to be a special design for the case in order to make these work. And it would be great if Apple can make the iPhone Pro come with two zoom lenses for 0.5x to 1.5x to 3.9x. So I'm not exactly sure what you mean there, but if Apple were to give us continuous zoom on the iPhone, I'm sure they're going to give us toggles for 0.5x, 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, for example. And regarding the cases for the iPhone 15 series, 
I'm assuming there's now going to be cutouts for the buttons. So Promo says having one large camera on the back would be worse than four because it would stick out so much while taking up the whole width of the device. Absolute nightmare, let's stick to three for now. So I do understand what you're saying, but to be honest, if one large main sensor on the iPhone looks anything like the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, I would not be against that. I think it looks pretty nice. And considering the camera bump in the corners getting bigger and bigger each year, I do think eventually when the cameras get too large and four lenses might be too cluttered, this is the way to go. So Diraj Play says, I think the entire iPhone 15 series will be getting the A17, not just the Pros, because the A16 was a stopgap chip, so they would want to discontinue production of 4 nanometer chips. This would be why they only gave the A16 chips to the iPhone 14 Pro, unlike the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Plus. 14 Pro is going to be discontinued, whereas the 14 and 14 Plus would be on sale for two more years. So to be honest, that could make sense, but do remember also that A17 chips are likely going to be more expensive to build because they're based on the 3 nanometer process and Apple might simply not want to lower their margins with the regular models and use a newer chip. In fact, I think that's a big reason the A16 chip was only on the Pros because yes, A16 was a stopgap chip, but it also was a lot more expensive to build and Apple would rather save some cash on the regular models and so of course since the chip does get cheaper to make as they produce more and more of them I do think the A16 chip is going to stay with the regular models. Obviously though I would love to be wrong about this I personally think the regular models should get the latest and greatest similar to what other manufacturers do but yes I still have a feeling the A16 chip is going to remain with the regular 15 series. So Josh has the M1 iMac and he would love to see an iMac Pro, ProMotion, OLEDs, more ports would convince him to upgrade. And fair enough, especially OLED, if we see that on the iMac Pro somehow, that would be nice. Though I do have my doubts because producing a massive OLED panel on the scale Apple needs is a little difficult. So it's more realistic we see mini LED on this. But either way, ProMotion, more ports, and additional power would be nice. And hopefully we also get black bezels. So Journey Stan says, Apple's going to keep the same design for the next 10 years. The way the world economy is at the moment, they might actually lower the color options. And that is a very fair point. In fact, even before the recession, the iMac rarely saw design changes. And so yes, expect the M1's design to remain the same for the next few years. And yes, you're right, we could see less color options. Since these machines are not as popular as the MacBooks and other desktops, and so having so many SKUs might not be worth it. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this report and your thoughts regarding iOS in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one.